I first came across the work of the Destiny Arts Youth Performance Company when I was shooting news for KRON Television in San Francisco. Sarah Crowell, the company director, and the youth in the company were preparing for their annual performance piece. The company was also dealing with the death of martial arts teacher Akko Nishimura, who was killed in the crosswalk in front of the Destiny Art Center a few weeks earlier. Our paths crossed at a fateful time as Akko had been wishing to do a video documentary about the company herself before her death. And I was getting tired of the repetition of news where I was mainly shooting stories about what's going wrong with people in society. I produced a short piece for KRON Television about Destiny and there was no turning back. I knew I had to do a longer documentary about the empowered youth of Destiny and the positive story of their after-school arts program. Later that year, I quit working in television news and shot tape one of what would become the A Place Named Destiny documentary. The first day of shooting allowed me to follow Sarah Crowell and one of the youth company members, Chanel Beatty, as they recruited for new company members in the classrooms of McClyman's High School in West Oakland. This high school is located in one of the toughest parts of town and is known as the worst performing school in the Oakland school system. The student body is 98% African American. The dropout rate is over 50%. Chanel was one of the students at McClyman's who was making a life for herself, partly because she had been a member of the Destiny Arts after school program since the seventh grade. Tell me where we are. We in a parking lot. And all the cars is hot. During another trip to McClyman's High School, I interviewed an amazing teacher, Ron Robinson, who helped me to understand the reality of life for McClyman's students. Unfortunately, his interview was one of the many great moments that did not make the final cut of the documentary. How do we raise consciousness, lift up our minds, work together uh, as a community of people attempting to move forward and overcome the odds, overcome the haters in our midst, overcome the people who have so, been so normalized to dysfunction. We have to have a counter movement to lift ourselves up. So smack down ignorance, smack down is like to put the smack down on something like, you know, using some of the lingo that comes from world wrestling stuff because everybody watches wrestling. So use the lingo that comes from that to make the point. Set your mind on fire. Lift yourself up, use your brain, get your mind right. Is this your brain? What a shame. If you see sex, violence, clothes, money, drugs, candy, alcohol, tobacco, jewelry, so, but there's this little part that says mental skills. Mm -hmm. That's the little part. We are about trying to grow this region of the brain. Here, too. This is Destiny flavor here. Here, trying to fit into the picture. Over the next six months, I videotaped more than 100 hours of footage from the auditions, rehearsals, interviews, and the original performance piece, Soul Dust, that the company created and performed six months later. Although the company consisted of 15 intelligent and unique young people, I decided that I could best tell the story by focusing on three of the young people. Sam Mendy Wong was one of the company members that I knew would be a main character even before I shot tape one. I had met him for the first time when I was shooting the news piece about Destiny, and he struck me as a true veteran of the group. Some of the funniest and most candid footage that was shot for the documentary came about when Sam actually took a camera home and filmed himself and shared his life in front of the camera. I was rejected by NYU and I was rejected by Vassar, my first choice. But I uh, did get into uh, Bard, and now I've been waitlisted by Wesleyan and Sarah Lawrence. So um, I guess we do have a reason to go back there during spring break. Uh, just a tour, look at colleges. Keeping it real on the positive twist. And for all of you at home watching this, turn that frown upside down and see if I can erase my face this here year. All I got to do is press this little red button right back here. Chanel Beatty was another character that I was fairly clear about early on in the shooting process. I knew that she had recently come out as a lesbian to Sarah Crowell, the company director. I asked Chanel if her coming out process could be in the documentary, and she firmly answered, no. After many weeks of spending time with one another, including trips to McDonald's and me following her around her school with a video camera, it came time for me to sit down with her and interview her for the documentary. 
I asked her the question if she thought being gay or lesbian was more accepted today than it has been in the past. In her answer, she accidentally came out as a lesbian to the camera. I think it's cool to be gay, lesbian, all that, you know? So it's, it's cool to, like, be what you want to be. If you want to have be with the same sex as you, I say go for it, you know? I have no shame with being a lesbian. <laughs> Unfortunately, after viewing her interview, I decided that I needed to reshoot her interview because of lighting and sound problems. When I told her this, she was upset at me for about a week and wouldn't speak to me when I would come shoot rehearsals. But eventually, she came up to me and told me that she would do a second interview and even more comfortably talked about being a young lesbian woman of color. No one knows that I'm a lesbian at McClam. It's probably about five, per five students there. No. They hang out with me. Why not? No. I check out half the girls at McClam. It's, I think it's really stupid that people cannot be themselves and be with the same sex if they want to. The third young person who ended up becoming a main character in the documentary was really an unexpected gift. Did you see that? That was beautiful. Art. Alice Taylor walked through the doors of destiny and auditioned for the company and I and everyone that was watching was blown away by her energy as she danced. She made it into the company on the spot. Alice is a 17-year-old African-American female who had had a very difficult past. Because of her problems with anger, she had been kicked out of almost every high school in Oakland and spent some time in juvenile hall. By the end of filming the documentary, Alice Taylor had become a dance teacher at the Destiny Arts Center. I saw that it was possible for young people to turn their lives around in a short period of time. It was very hard for me after the shooting was over and the weekly rehearsals and bonding sessions came to an end. But as I wrapped production on a place named Destiny, I truly felt that this project was a special kind of destiny. A place named Destiny was the perfect antidote to the TV news world that I'd come from. And I felt so lucky to have been able to create a video about young people and something that's going right in the world.